Now, Scikit Learn is working very well. And the question is, how do we enable it to tackle bigger and problems on smaller computers? So we've been working on improving the efficiency of Scikit-Learn on a single core up to many computers. And I'd like to give you a few hints of the things that we're doing. Our first focus is on better algorithms because better algorithms allow to make better use of the same hardware. So take an example of the principal component analysis. Principal component analysis reduces the data by finding the directions of maximum variance. Its computational cost scales as n, one direction of the matrix, p, the other direction of the matrix, times the minimum np. So it's quadratic in one of the two dimensions. So it can become costly. And there is one way of decreasing this cost, which is to use randomized algorithms. The, the idea of a randomized algorithm is that it will benefit from the redundancy of the data to take shortcuts. And randomized PCA, if I can give simplified int intuitions, the way it works is that it takes a, a random fraction of the data. It does a small PC on that random fraction. And that small PC is uh, uh, much less costly because of the quadratic cost. And then it does this many times, not too many, maybe a dozen. And it aggregates uh, the results via PC across the results. And so this is now the default in scikit-learn PCA. And uh, we uh, uh, embedded heuristics that turn this feature on and off depending on whether it's likely to be successful. This is with uh, the default uh, solver, which is auto. And in our experience, it uh, typically gives up to uh, 10x uh, speed up on the same hardware. Another common uh, use case, another common model, is uh, logistic regression. So logistic regression is a linear regression. And uh, so it's a, it's a cost that needs to be minimized. and it's. Uh, traditionally minimized by a gradient descent uh, on a measure of the error to minimize this uh, error. And when you have a very uh, large number of samples, then the error or its gradients uh, are costly to compute because they're the sum on all these uh, samples. So you can take the full gradient, so summing on all the samples, and you get a nice uh, convergence. Uh, you can take a small number of samples to compute uh, the gradient, and you can change the small number of samples. And if you do this, you get what's known as a stochastic gradient descent, which I've uh, uh, displayed here. However, uh, the problem with stochastic gradient descent is that it's quite finicky and, and may not converge well. And so what you can do is that you can combine this idea of subsampling the gradient with the idea of a noise reduction, which is to take an average, a clever average with the past. And for this, there's an algorithm that's known as SAGA, and it gives you the best of both worlds because it's not finicky, does not require you to, to uh, uh, choose well a learning rate, uh, and it's uh, uh, much faster because it, it can exploit uh, the redundancy in the data. So that's an example of uh, an algorithmic improvement. And finally, if we look at gradient-boosted trees, uh, the trick here is that we're going to fit those trees on sufficient summary. And the, the idea of gradient-boosted trees is that they're a succession of decision trees. So decision trees are basically partitions of the feature space. And this succession that is built one after the other, and they, they enrich each other, and they become uh, uh, finer and finer. And so one thing that we did recently is that we borrowed a technique that's used in XGBoost and LightGBM, which is to compute histograms of the features and to bend the data on those histograms. And so basically, we're taking the data set, and we're, take, we're computing uh, bend a feature from these. And then we're computing the, um, uh, the partitions on the data on, on, on those bend features. And this gives orders of magnitude speed up when the data is very large. And it's implemented in a new uh, model, uh, new that came up last, came out last year, that is called HIST Gradient Boosting Regressor, or HIST Gradient Boosting Classifier. So there is a, a common uh, thread to those algorithmic improvement is the idea that we're going to fit on several subsamples or chunk, and then we're going to aggregate or do variance reduction or fit on summary statistics. So these are statistical tricks to uh, compute, to solve faster uh, statistical estimation problems. Now, once we've done this, maybe we'll want to uh, use more cores, uh, use bigger hardware, in which case uh, we'll be looking at parallel computing. And the, the problem with data processing in parallel computing is that you need computing schemes that limit transfer, data transfer. And there's typically two of these schemes. Uh, one is the uh, data parallelism, which uh, uh, assumes that you can divide your operation on different uh, blocks of data and execute it in parallel. 
And the other idea is model parallelism. You're going to fit many different models on the same data. And you can do this, for instance, uh, for model selection. Now, uh, in real life machine learning, you have a combination of those patterns and many other patterns. In scikit-learn, we use different implementations for the different patterns, though there are multiple patterns. For the inner loop, we need extremely fast parallel computing. And for this, we use operating system level threads or OpenMP using the uh, um, implementation of OpenMP from the, the compiler with which the library was built. However, the challenge is that we're combining many different uh, libraries because we're using combination of uh, SciPy. We are used uh, in settings with various linear algebra packages. We might be used with other libraries. And as a consequence, there is a, a competition of all those libraries that live in the same uh, process. And the danger here is to have oversubscription. On the other end of the spectrum, we have large scale parallelism, in which case we need to work across multiple Python virtual machines or across computers. And there the challenge is transfer of data and synchronization across those workers. So the real life is we have a combination of all this and it's a merry mess. We often have oversubscription, inefficient transfers, the core problem behind this is that of scheduling. However, as a library, we're used in bigger settings. So we do not want to implement a scheduler. Rather, what we need is a simple API that enables us to focus on algorithmics, but to delegate the scheduling to an environment. The, the idea being that scikit-learn is a library, it doesn't own the main. And for this, we've been relying on joblib, joblib is a very simple pattern that enables parallel for loops. However, it comes in with many different tricks. It, for instance, can manage a pool of Python virtual machines. It can do lazy loop consumption to limit memory usage or auto batching to lower overhead. It can limit the number of threads in a sub process. More interestingly, Joblib can delegate its work to backends. And so it can delegate its work to a, a complex scheduler such as Dask. And to me, this is an exciting alley to have scikit-learn work in larger settings. We've also been working upstream, improving the Python virtual machine, improving pickling, which is crucial when you need to transfer objects from one machine to another one, improving uh, predictors, the idea being that you can persist scikit-learn in um, language agnostic representation that can then be uh, used in production in uh, other virtual machines, such as uh, with a C++ uh, virtual machine. And that's very useful for uh, deployment or production. So we're trying to couple in a larger ecosystem. So for scaling, algorithmic improvement is our top priority. However, we are working on coupling to external infrastructure to scale out.